Blog Talk Radio. Welcome, everybody, to the Outdoor Scoreboard. If you can hear us, we're live a little bit later on in the evening this time than we usually are. Thanks for joining us. Uh, we've got a special guest coming up. Me and Matt's going to cover some fishing news here and there, so uh, stay tuned, and we'll get this thing figured out. It seems like we're having a technical difficulty maybe here. Uh, we're going to cover the uh, weekend series regional on Neely Henry, the uh, TTBC uh, fixing to happen on Lake Conroe in Texas, and a lot of other fishing news. The All-Star Week just wrapped up. Uh, rookie Hank Cherry won it up in uh, Michigan, a long way from North Carolina, and beat some good pros up there. While we're mating, waiting on our Newest, the newest member of Missouri or resident of Missouri to join us, Matt. Uh, I will fill in and do what I can until we get this technical difficulty taken care of. I have a, a guest cricket here with me in the garage, and uh, if you can hear him, I apologize. I should have got him done or on a hook before the show started. It being on, he being an Eastern time, it's a little late for me to do this show, so I always go out in the garage and do them. And, um, but anyway, we'll get through this somehow. I'm waiting on Mr. Uh, Mr. Ellis to join us. And uh, I know Matt uh, settled in to the Show Me State, moving in, moving from Tennessee to Missouri in a career change or a, a job move or job location move. And uh, I know his... Uh, volunteers played last weekend, and uh, Kentucky played. Of course, we actually cover a little SEC sports on here as well as fishing, keep it diverse, and we're smack dab in the middle of college football season. So um, Kentucky played Florida, if you could call it that. We scored on our first drive, and we didn't score the rest of the week, the rest of the game. Hey, can you guys hear me? Hey, we got somebody hey, from Missouri. All right. Yeah, I tell you what, man, uh, you get up here in these hills in Ozarks, technology is maybe a little bit behind the, the rest of us down there in God's country. <laughs> well, but, uh, the border in the state of Kentucky, I didn't know if we was on or not, so I figured I'd try to do a little filler work. I probably sounded like a like a ninth grade radio DJ over the school intercom. I think you're doing a good job. I think I got Sam on here, too. Sam, you there? I'm here. All right. Sorry about the little... Uh, Confusion here. I'm at the Holiday Inn Express. I'm gonna wake up in the morning feeling like I know something. You'll be a brain surgeon tomorrow. That's right. I'll at least act like it. Uh, appreciate yeah. everybody listening to the show tonight. Uh, and it's kind of short notice. We were going to try to get Brandon Card on, but our schedule, our schedule is conflicting. But we thought this would be a great opportunity to get a scoop on what's going on down in Alabama this week. We got the Bass Masters Weekend Series uh, Regional Tournament on Neely Henry Lake. And I know a lot of people who listen to the show are really interested in uh, what's going on down there because a lot of us have ties to the Middle Tennessee area and the Old Hickory, and we know what's coming up here in another month. We've got the, the opportunity to for one person to win the tournament and go to the Bassmasters Classic on Gunnersville Lake, which, David, you know, uh, we've been talking about all year. 
you know, Gunnersville and Chickamauga. I've been going back and forth all year um, with big weights. So, uh, Sam Lashley is a strike king pro and a Kentucky Lake native. He's been dominating all year on Kentucky Lake, and uh, he's also got some good experience on Old Hickory. So, uh, Sam, I thought we'd just get, get on here and kind of get a report on how it's going down there. Well, I've been down here for a couple of days, and, um, you know, as you know, New Henry is a, a Coosa River lake, I guess you could say, but it's mainly a river. And um, I've never been on this lake before. I've been on lake before, which is right above this lake. And um, it's got, it supposedly has some big spots and some big largemouth in them, but I'm ne- I haven't... Um, Caught one of them yet in three days. I've scratched out a limit every day the last three days, but I'm telling you, I've it's scratched. I've scratched them out. It's been tough, very tough for me. They haven't been pulling current like they normally do. I don't know why, but they're not pulling current. And um, you know, now there's a lot of boats coming down here. A lot of guys are down here and they're practicing for the tournament and everybody's on top of each other, kind of fishing small. But um, it's going to be very interesting to see, you know, what went to this tournament. Um, I've heard that there's a lot of good fish in this lake. I have yet to experience that, uh, but I'm hoping for better things the next couple of days, you know, and um, hopefully, you know, Friday and Saturday I can put it together and hopefully get a a top 20 finish and make it to Old Hickory. For for those of us who haven't been on the lake, can you you describe kind of what the terrain is like? Is there anything that you can compare it to compared to like uh, Old Hickory or Kentucky Lake or Barkley? It's very similar to, you know, Old Hickory and or Barkley. The, The upper ends of both of them, it is definitely a river lake. Um, you know, uh, as where we're putting in, right in Gaston, if you go up, it is all river. I mean, it's very narrow. Um, there's some very few sloughs up there, but, um, there's supposedly some huge spots up the river, but, um, there, there's not many flats or anything if, as you go up, but there's plenty of cover in the water to fish. But as you go down from Gazin, the city of Gazin, because the river runs right through the middle of the city of Gazin, as you go down from there, it kind of opens up just a little bit. And, um, you know, it's winding. It's got a lot of big swings in the river channel, and there's some creeks down the lake. And um, not very big creeks. I would compare it to, um, you know, Old Hickory. Uh, like when you get right down from 109, and there's some, you know, like you get the Spencer Creek and such like that. But, um, you know, supposedly it's got some huge spots in it, and I've been trying to catch one of those three or four or five pound spots in it, and I can't wait to get a hold of one. Hopefully I will. But the, the water color is dingy. There's a lot of wood on the river channel there's stumps and there's a lot of grass as far as like it's a pond weed grass like old hickory the big um river grass is what i call it it's not millpool or coontail or hydrilla it's just the the pond the, it's called pond weed grass and um it, you know i call it river grass like old hickory grass the green stuff that you see growing out from the lake and that's be a very predominant pattern is to swim a jig through that grass and I've been doing a lot of that and I have caught some fish doing it but the water's kind of low so I don't think the fish are really in the grass and I don't think they're really shallow like that but um, you know I'm I'm still kind of just trying to figure it out I don't have much help down here I'm just trying to figure it out by myself hopefully I will but um, you know it's a beautiful beautiful lake I mean it's unbelievable as you go down the lake there's hills and, and um, valleys and, the you know, there's shallow cover everywhere. It's just a shallow water fishing is a dream. You know, I've been throwing my Strike King spinner baits and flipping my Strike King jigs and throwing my one point Strike King 1.5s and my Strike King Series 5s and my red-eye shads, and I've been throwing everything I can possibly throw. 
and I managed to get a, a, just a small limit, you know, nine to probably 12 pounds the last three days, which I don't know if that's going to be enough to qualify to make it to Old Hickory. And hopefully, you know, I might figure something out in the next couple of days. Well, from the way it sounds, you know, I've heard some other reports about how tough the fishing has been uh, this week. Our old friend of the show, Dr. Geneva Co., I think he even mentioned the first day he was down there, I think he said he fished for, I don't know how many, eight, eight hours or 12 hours, whatever it was, and he only caught like maybe three fish. So um, it's probably on a little bit of a learning curve, getting, getting used to it, but it sounds like anybody who ends up doing well in that tournament is going to earn their spot on Old Hickory, which, you know, it's, it's known lately to be a pretty tough lake too. So tell us a little bit about your experience with Old Hickory in the past. Uh, I know I talked to you a few months ago back in the summer about it. Uh, you know, you mentioned that uh, it can get better in, in the fall, especially in November. It can kind of, if the lake, you know, doesn't get too out of whack like it has been early in the year, it, the fall fishing can be a little bit better. You know, typically the fall is a tougher time on any lake, you know, to catch largemouth bass. And they they don't relate to the cover as much unless you have, like, you know, hydrilla or millpool in the lake, like Guntersville or something. Such. And even with that, even at Guntersville, if you remember a couple of years ago, Paul Elias won on Guntersville with the Alabama rig with 100 pounds, which blew everybody's mind because nobody else was catching them like that. Well, for one reason or another, in the fall, it's very difficult to catch bass on any lake, even if it's a fantastic lake choked full of bass. It's typically a tougher time to catch fish, you know, and this lake is proven to, to do that. And if I'm blessed enough by the good Lord to be able to qualify for Old Hickory, I expect Old Hickory to be tough also, which is always tough. But I also expect, you know, in November, there's not a lot of tournaments on Old Hickory at that time. You know, the lake probably will be re well rested and, and not tournament boats on the lake or any kind of fishing on the lake because, you know, everybody's watching football. They're um, hunting. They're deer hunting. They're squirrel hunting. They're, they're, they're doing everything but bass fishing at that time of year. And that lake should be well rested and not pressured, so I expect that there'll be some good sacks of fish brought on that lake. In fact, it would not surprise me if a 20-pound sack was weighed in during that tournament, um, or maybe even a couple three 20-pound sacks during November. I think Old Hickory does have a lot of big fish in it, but they're so pressured that um, you know they just don't bite. That they've seen every kind of lure that they can possibly see because there's three or four tournaments a week out there. And um, once that pressure eases this time of year, because there's no tournaments out there, I think the fish will be more aggressive and they'll be biting better, you know, when that tournament happens. I think it'll be a better tournament. It wouldn't surprise me to see, you know, a lot higher weight to win that tournament. Good deal. And, you know, that's a good point that, uh, you know, recently there was uh, your buddy, Rusty Rust and everybody with the uh, Fish Fish and Affliction show and Mickey Beck and all of them have been working hard to get some attention brought to Old Hickory about maybe, you know, seeing what they could do to get, maybe work on getting some grass in the lake or maybe getting some Florida strain in there. But that's a good point about all the boat pressure that's not just from fishing tournaments, but even, you know, all the recreational anglers and they all share, um, you know, especially when you get up towards flippers on the upper end, all that water gets pretty narrow. There's a lot of pressure up there that, that the fish are constantly being, you know, exposed to. So um, once all these fair weather fishermen get off the lake and, uh, you know, all the big recreational boats and skiers put up that stuff, too cold to get out there and ski, a lot of that stuff that happens usually during the summertime, even on the weekdays, will go away. So that, that might be a good thing. Uh, for you guys to, like you said, take that pressure off. Um, you know, fish get kind of comfortable again about roaming flats out there and chasing the shad. So that that might be a good point. Hey, yeah, Dave, this is Dave. Uh, how many days, if somebody brought in a 20-pound bag on day one on Old Hickory, that would take them to day three, wouldn't it? 
Uh, yeah, I, I mean, with you know, de- with, the, with, with a halfway decent bag on day two. Uh, it's hard to say. I mean, you know, I've fished old hickory all my life, and I have caught a lot of big bags on old hickory. I've been very fortunate. I won the FLW Series there in 06, and I had a 17-pound sack and a 16-pound sack, but I also had an 11-pound sack and a 9-pound sack, you know, four days. And, though, you know, the 17 and 16, are, are, for one person, they're, they're, that's big, you know, a big sack of fish, actually, to do that. And, and right now, uh, this the last couple of years, the lake has been so down for whatever reason, and there's many reasons why it's down, and that's another topic. But, you know, you're looking at 12 to 14 pounds winning big tournaments out there, one-day tournaments, team tournaments. Um, and that's just, you know, that that's poor uh, um, for a lake that is, you know, that has been so good in the past. I've seen 25 pounds win a lot of terms on Old Hickory. But for whatever reason, Old Hickory is really, really down right now. And um, um, I don't know why, but I think, like, Rusty and, and a lot of people are trying to um, get the TWRA to stop Old Hickory with Florida strain, strain bass like they do Chickamauga. I think that's a very excellent idea. I think it, it would help Old Hickory. You know, and there's a, a subject as far as milfoil and grass and hydrilla growing in the lake. It's had plenty of it in the past, but they, you know, thrown the spray it, spray on it and uh, um, pellets on it and killed it. And um, they don't want the grass growing on Old Hickory, so you know I think that's not an option as far as the hydrilla and milfoil goes. So why not stop Florida bass in Old Hickory? They do it in Chickamauga. They have done it in Kentucky Lake. They've done it in a lot of lakes around here. And if we can get Florida strain bass stocked in, or just any kind of bass stocked in the Old Hickory, it's going to help the population and help the fishing and you know help the community and, and help the economy in that area, which it needs. Because Old Hickory right now, as far as fishing goes, is as bad as it's ever been, in my opinion. Now, on the other hand, going back to what we're saying as far as the BASS uh, Weekend Series National Championship coming there, being in November, I mean, I think that you will see some bigger sacks of fish brought in just because of um, the amount of pressure that, that it will be eased on the lake. You know, you, you'll see some, um, nobody's fishing the lake now. There's no big tournaments going on. All these every single day tournaments that's been happening out there. I mean, they've got a tournament on Monday night, Tuesday night, Wednesday night. Tournaments over Saturday and Sunday. That's a lot of pressure on those fish. So you're going to have about two months where those fish aren't being pressured. They're not seeing lures. They're not being, you know, hammered. They're not, you know, the recreational boats aren't on the lake like you're saying. And, and that's going to make the fish more aggressive. There's no doubt it will. And, um, you know, and it wouldn't surprise me to see a 20 pound sack. And for, you know, four days, it, it could take, you know, you know, 50, 55 pounds to win that tournament, in my opinion. Well, that's, that's pretty encouraging words. Uh, you know, we've, we've had a couple of tournaments up there this year with the, uh, Tennessee Central, and, uh, I was fortunate enough to do pretty well in one of them, but I'll, um, it's been a tough tournament, like you said. I think, uh, you know, it, it's we got a long ways to go to plan this out. But uh, I think, like you said, you put Florida Bass and Chickamauga and, and Kentucky Lake, why not put them right in the middle between those two lakes and one of the biggest tourist areas in the, in the country? So I think it'll work. Uh, but real quick, Sam, before we let you go, I know you got to you get up early and go catch some fish. Let's move to the topic real quick. It wouldn't be fair to have you on here because we don't get that chance very often to talk about it. But uh, something that's a little bit easier to figure out what's going on wrong is Tennessee Volunteers. Um, I think it's a lot easier to point out what's wrong with with them than it is sometimes with Old Hickory. But, uh, you know, we've had a pretty rough year. David and I talk a lot about David's a big UK fan. I'm a ball fan. We like to talk a little bit about sports on the show and get some guests on here. Tell us real quick about your thoughts about how do you think the Vols are going this year? 
Well, I mean, <laughs> the last four or five years has been as as low as it gets for you know the Tennessee Volunteers as far as football goes. And my blood does run orange. Um, as a lot of people know, my sister's boy, Austin Johnson, played four years for Tennessee the last four years, and um, now he's playing for the Saints. But those four years were a very trying time for us because Tennessee had always had a championship team during Fulmer. Uh, Fulmer recruited Austin, and when he was a freshman, he played for um, Fulmer. And then at the end of that year, Fulmer got fired. Then we went through Lane Kiffin. Then we went through um, Dooley. And now we're with Butch Jones. And um, hopefully, you know, so Austin was, it was just very unfortunate that Austin played during probably the worst four years in Tennessee football history. However, he was a great football player. And as you know, he's playing for the Saints now. And um, he's got a great future ahead of him. But Bush Jones, I believe, you know, he's going to be a, a pretty good coach, hopefully. Uh, you know, I think he's made some mistakes so far, but um, his recruiting is going well. I think things are looking up for him. And um, if he continues to recruit like he does and, you know, everything goes in cycles as far as college football goes, just like a lot of lakes. You know, hopefully Old Hickory's going to come back and be strong again if we can get some things done out there. But like like lakes and football and everything else that goes in cycles, Alabama's up. But I can remember when Alabama was way down, you know, when we were up. Um, so I'm just very optimistic and hoping that Tennessee football can come back around and um, we can have a championship team because I'm telling you right now, it, it's very painful to be a Tennessee volunteer football fan because we're going through just a, a just a terrible time and it hurts. All these losses, I'm telling you, it just kills me because my blood runs orange. And um, I want Tennessee to do good. I want our football team to, to play good and win some games. We've won maybe, what, three or four SEC games in the last three or four years. That's just horrible. It's unacceptable. And um, hopefully Butch Jones can can um, get us on the right track. You know, him getting Jalen Hurd and um, Todd Kelly's son and – all these boys that he's recruiting this year, he's got like the number two or number three recruiting class in the country right now. And uh, hopefully um, he can get a couple more, you know, some big guys, you know, defensive linemen that's going to really, that's what it takes to win these games in the college level is, is um, good defense and a good defensive line. And hopefully he can get some of those. But if if not, you know, I'll see a, you know, another three, four, five years where we're going to just really be hurting. And um, but hopefully you know I'm, no matter what I'm a Tennessee fan and I'm gonna support them and um, let's get you know hopefully get this thing turned around and and um, win some ball games. Yeah, uh, now, old buddy David Rose there. David, you can probably tell us you know a little bit about. I like to give David a hard time, Sam. David, can tell us a little bit about hard times football. You know, being a hey, being a big well, fan. No, I've, I've been a Kentucky basketball fan all my life. I actually had a great uncle that played for Rupp way back when. And, uh, you know, from an outsider looking in, I think Tennessee football, kind of like Kentucky football, your previous coaches just left the cupboard bare, and they're having to basically start over. And, you know, we got us a decent football coach now, and we're we're actually playing a little football in Kentucky now. I don't know how long it'll last, but I'm looking forward to it. I've always wanted to be a Kentucky football fan. But I've never seen a team find more ways to lose ball games, and they don't even do it on purpose. It just happens to them. And I think they finally got somebody in there with some direction that can get some of this bad karma out of there, whatever it is. I think we need to send them some of the show mojo, man. I don't know what's going on. Oh yeah, I forgot to tell Sam. You know, it's, it's been a running thing going on this year. Just about all the guests we've had on this time, uh, you know, this show this year have ended up. Uh, uh, you know, going on and winning the very next tournament. Like we had Randy Howe on he, that right before he won the Open. Uh, of course, Janice told we've had him, and uh, he's had some good success. Brent Anderson's had some success. I don't know if we have anything to do with it, but we like to take pride in it. So uh, we hope right. to like you That's right. Yeah. Oh, I hope that you're saying that y'all's luck is going to rub off on me because I really need it right now. 
I mean, like David, I did read some Facebook posts that David put on there. And, um, you know, I know David, he likes to fish offshore, and I have been looking offshore for these fish. And I've been throwing my Strike King Series 5s and um, 6 Xds and my football head jigs out wide, and I just can't seem to get that going. So normally, when you know, when you do that, you can go shallow, especially on river lakes like this, and catch some fish. But um, I'm not really catching. I'm not finding them. I'm gonna be honest. And and supposedly, you know, this lake's got some huge spots on it. They're not. Uh, the locals down here say, "Don't call them Kentuckys." So um, they got two sort of river spots that are like four and five pounds down here everywhere, and they're not doing it right now. But, you know, this is a time of year where in the fall, October, you know, 2nd, tomorrow's my birthday, believe it or not, October 2nd, the water oh, temperature is still 78 to um, 79 degrees in a lot of places, which that's, you know, that's not typical. Normally, you know, in, in the fall, your temperature is, is dropping in the low 70s or, or high 60s and even lower. And um, those fish do get shallow and they get real good on top water and, the, um, you know, or swimming a jig or on a red-eye shad, you know, or something, and a striking spinnerbait. But those fish, you know, they're, they're, they just seem to be in between. I threw a... Um, an umbrella rig, a striking titanium umbrella rig for a while today, and I did find um, two two or three different spots with an umbrella rig where I caught a couple of two pounders on the same cast. You know, so that that was unreal. You know, I'm down in Alabama throwing the Alabama rig, but I, then, I, then I threw it for another three hours straight and never got another bite on it. So that's just how fishing is right now. Um. You know, you'll catch them here, you'll catch them there, and um, but I just can't put a, a solid pattern together right now. But hopefully, you know, by game time, I'll be able to put it together and qualify for that national old hickory. I would love to win this tournament, don't get me wrong. Um, you know, I've been blessed by the good Lord to, to have won a lot of tournaments in my lifetime. But my goal on this tournament is absolutely just to make that championship on Old Hickory. Because my, the big picture is to win the Old Hickory tournament and make it back to the Bassmasters Classic. I made it in 07, you know, and the $100,000 would be great too. But I just want to make it back to that Bassmaster Classic because I didn't do real well at it um, on Lay Lake when I made it in 07. And I'd like to, a chance to... Um, you know, redeem myself, so to speak. And that's what no, my goal is. To make it through this one and then um, hopefully win an old hickory. That's my goal. There you go. Nothing wrong with that. You know, down there at Lay Lake, when we had that regional down there two or three years ago, a chatterbait won that tournament. Yeah, and normally, you know, um, a chatterbait is, is a good bait this time of year. But if you you know, most of the people that throw a chatter bait type bait, which um you know, now Strike King has the new Rage Blade out and it's just fantastic. When I'm telling you y'all need to go get the new Rage Blade. It's it's uh, the guy that developed um the chatter bait developed this for Strike King and it is fabulous. Wait till you put it on a rod and reel and a line and throw it. You're gonna love it. But that you know, the water temperature Needs to get just a little cooler for that. The fish just aren't up shallow everywhere, you know, hitting a lot of different types of baits. When that water temperature gets um, to the lower 70s and, and in the 60s, that that um, raised blade will be, I'm telling you, it'll crush them like a spinner bait. But right now, these fish are just suspending. They're, 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 um, the cover that they're, that they're relating to is the shad. It's not really the, the wood, it's not grass, it's, um, you know, it's the shad. They're chasing the shad around. This is, that's why fall fishing is so tough. But when that water temperature gets down into the um, 60s or even the upper 50s, those fish will be up on those flats everywhere where shallow water baits will get them a lot better than they're doing right now. And that's why, you know, that... um Umbrella rig is so good, and that's why Paul Elias two years ago won at Old Hickory, I mean at um, Guntersville. Nobody could believe he caught 100 pounds. 
on that bait because that bait is so 